people gathering together on social media can have huge amounts of power if they decide to leverage it that way. Our brains respond to food content the exact same way, pretty much, that we respond to food being in front of us. There is a salivation uh, response, there's also a desire, and at the same time there's also a retrieval of previous food experiences, which then your brain connects the dots and goes, okay, have we had this food before? What was it like? And also, let's get ready to eat because I've seen food and now it's time to eat. So primarily in my clinical work, what I do is I integrate nutrition and psychotherapy and I merge them together. And what that means is that most people I see, they have some kind of food or body image issues that tend to have complex psychological roots most of the time. And sometimes part of what we talk about is the role or the impact that social media can have based on what they're looking at, who they're comparing themselves to. So I end up having quite a lot of conversations with people about how to either reduce their social media, media use or to improve their social media use. So informational social norms are when we use other people as a guide and the information we receive from other people as a guide for perhaps how to behave or what decisions to make. So this might be in a food setting, it might be that we decide to eat the same thing as people around us in order to maintain some sense of belonging and community. But this extends to beyond even seeing what other people eat and just having information about what other people eat. And these have a powerful influence on us because we want people to like us and we want to belong. Social media has a lot of power and influence to change eating habits, which can be both in a positive way or in a negative way. Uh, a lot of the kind of food trends that we see sometimes originate on social media to perhaps drive people towards maybe considering eating more plants. It might be a source of inspiration for people if they are maybe wanting to eat less meat, for example, or wanting to eat healthier. Social media can be a place to look for that kind of inspiration. I think on social media in particular, influencers, but also just general consumers can have a huge amount of power because they can gather together in large groups. You can find people who agree with you perhaps or who have the same drive towards a particular purpose more easily than you might do in your general day-to-day -day life. And what we've seen is that social media can actually end up changing not only the food industry, but also food policy on quite a significant level at times. So I think in that way, people gathering together on social media can have huge amounts of power if they decide to leverage it that way.